Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're in my sweatshirt today because I figure there's going to be snow shoveling coming up here quick this morning yet when the snow ends. Of course, Bonnie says I can't shovel with my arm the way it is. She's not wrong. But I'm going to use a snowblower. At least I'm going to start it and point her in the right direction. Anyway, good morning. Yeah, snow. Snow in Wisconsin today. <laughs> Imagine that, the end of March, it's snowing. Uh, we're supposed to get a trace. I think we're up to three inches. And it's coming down heavy. It was, well, the, the flakes have gotten smaller, but it's that heavy, wet, sticks to everything, takes down trees, knocks down power lines kind of snow. Uh, the stuff that when you drive on, it's just like slush the minute you drive on it. It's slippery. Um, Bonnie said when she took Xan to school, there were already cars in the ditch. So it's, uh, yeah, it's March in Wisconsin. That's what it is. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing. You can have snow here in Wisconsin. Uh, well, we've had it all the way up into July, actually. But that's, that's kind of a freak thing. But 
certainly um, snow even into May um, is not impossible. The stuff that comes in May doesn't last long. Um, but between the, the warm weather at the end of uh, last week, beginning of this week, and the rain that we had last night, uh, I would say probably 95% of the snow that was on the ground is gone, uh, except where it had piled up or where it's uh, shaded or on a north face. But that's Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin. You don't like it, don't live here. So, and, and here in the northern part of Wisconsin, it, it hangs on a little longer than it does to the south. So, I was talking to my older son over in Michigan uh, yesterday, and he said they had 70 the day before. Um, 70. It's 70. Uh, yeah, you heard me right. 7 0, and that's Fahrenheit. Ooh, 70 Celsius would be terrible. Anyway. Good morning. Glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in God's Word on this Wednesday morning. Uh, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Mushtaq, good evening, brother. Jerry, good morning. Um, oh, i got to click some likes here as I go. Jerry, good morning. Good morning to you. Ashley, it's good to see you here, dear. God's blessings. Brenda, good morning. 37 with a high of 47. Yeah, well, we're not raining. But we're, we're sitting right at 31, 32, 30, 33. You know, right in that range where you get the big, heavy, wet snowflakes. 37 will keep you safe from the snow, though. So good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Renee. Glad you're windy. Okay. Yeah, we haven't had a lot of wind yet. I was commenting to Bonnie here a few minutes ago that the wind was starting. There was one of them... Uh, off the roof of the house you saw the snow blowing and I thought you know if this stuff it, this stuff doesn't blow around a lot but the stuff that's falling off the trees can blow and if, it, if the temperature drops another four or five degrees and then it starts to blow this could get downright nasty a lot of the rural area schools north and east of us um, closed this morning they just said you know what not happening uh, but I looked at the weather map and they were getting a lot of wintry mix I know Anago was closed. I don't know. Uh, Jill and John, good morning. I don't know if Rhinelander was closed up by you guys. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be kind of nasty this morning. I hope they don't close halfway through because Alexander's trying out for another play. Uh, they're going to do the Emperor's Close. Emperor's New Closed uh, is their next play. So I didn't know they were having another one. I think it's great. I think it's great. Let's see. We got a lot of a lot of Bonnie saying good morning to people here as I scroll down. That makes it kind of tough to see what's going on. Uh, oh, there's Devin Grant. Good morning to you guys. Snowy an inch so far. Yeah, we've got over ice. Yeah, we've got more than an inch now. Uh, good morning, Ann Grant and Deb. Glad you're here. Uh, Bonnie. Oh, that's oh, that's Bonnie saying good morning to Leela. Good morning, Leela. Speaking of which, good to see you here, dear. Um. Yeah, Bonnie says she'll put up a, a Facebook. Oh, Ashley, uh, condolences to you and and your family. We'll include uh, we'll include that in our prayers today. Your cousin who passed of bone cancer, fifty five is too young. Fifty five is too young. However, if faith was in Christ Jesus, Paul tells us um, to die is gain, to live is Christ. Well, um, that is to say. To die is to be with Christ, and that is a gain. Uh, and to live is another day to preach Christ. And so it's an, uh, to continue living as Christ. And I think that all the time. Myself. So good morning. Good morning to all of you who are here with us, even those lurking in the background. And good morning to those who are uh, watching later or even later good evening um, or tomorrow or what have you. So hello. I have started... Um, as of Monday, uh, uploading these devotions a day later on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. So um, if you miss it here or something like that, and you want to find it also under Reverend David Sutton on YouTube, you can find it. Uh, not important if you can find it here, right? So, hey, Verna, good morning to you. I'm a little looser than I normally am because I took some tramadol at four o'clock this morning which is i've been told it's not a narcotic but when they gave it to me they treated it like a narcotic and it's a controlled substance so yeah i'm a little more relaxed than usual so hey connie robin good morning freezing rain and mix up there yeah 
Yeah, that's what they were kind of saying. Well, at least it'll be gone for tomorrow when I have to come up there. And today, normally today would be Bible history down here at 4.30, but we don't have uh, the Merrill School District's on break. Um, so they don't have Bible history. And so 6 o'clock tonight's the Lenten dinner here and 7 o'clock service. Hopefully by then it'll be cleared off. Well, let's go ahead and get into this, the reason we're here, our daily devotion. Uh, if you have a Lutheran service book, the Hymnal of the Missouri Synod Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, page 295, there you find the morning order of daily prayer. So let us begin there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Continuing on here where we've left off, I'm not jumping this time. Um, but our psalm today, Psalm 129. Um, yeah, Psalm 129. Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth. <laughs> Yet they have prevailed against, have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed up on my back. They made long their furrows. The Lord is righteous. He has cut the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned backward. Let them be like the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor the binder of sheaves his arms. Nor do those who pass by say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, that's kind of, I was going to say weird, but different. I wonder what that idiom is. The plowers plowed up on my back. They made long their furrows. Hmm. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned backward. Well, there is that. It's imprecatory at that point. It's a, a psalm against God's enemies. I know a grass on the housetop is like that'd be a sod roof house, and the, the roof of a sod roof house always dries out before the ground does and um, that's that's a kind of grass that uh, a reaper does not fill his hand and the binder does not get a sheath so that would be those who are uh, lost to their sins and condemned well let's leave the psalm and go on to our reading our reading today from Genesis now again I'm continuing on right where we left off so if you're following along the treasury of daily prayer we're actually on the third Sunday in Lent um, we haven't Quite, we're la this is last Sunday. Um, but I want to keep going here. Like I said, there's there's important things. And as I find things, all of God's word is important. Don't get me wrong. But as, as I find things that I feel like I can either explain well and pass over, um, I'll do so to get us caught back up. But today we're picking up right where we left off with Genesis chapter 27, verses 30 to 45 and then and then 28 10 to 22 so we're jumping a little bit within the order that the, the uh, treasury of daily prayer has here um, but we're picking up with with the blessing of of jacob um, yesterday uh, his father blessed him and and now the aftermath of that uh, is is what we have today so let's begin here at genesis chapter 27 beginning at verse verse 30 as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also prepared delicious food and brought it to his father. 
And he said to his father, <clears throat> Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, Who are you? He answered, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me, and I ate it all before you came, and I have blessed him? Yes, and he shall be blessed. As soon as Esau heard the words, <clears throat> he got a frog, heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him lord over you and all his brothers. I have given to him for servants, given, I'm sorry, uh, and all his, all his brothers I have given to him for servants. And with grain and wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, Away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to Laban, my brother in Haran, and stay with him a while until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereft of you both in one day? Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And you and your offspring shall, shall all the families of the world be blessed. All the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. <clears throat> then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, 
and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Longer reading, my friends. So, the um, deception is found out. And Esau, the oldest son, receives, well, not nothing, um, but his blessing from his father uh, is to be away from the fatness of the land, the rich land. And uh, that he will be, his, he and his offspring will serve Jacob, and they will be a people who live by the sword. Uh, they will be, will be a warrior race. Um, we know them as the Edomites, more commonly. Esau is, is known as, as Edom, and they become his descendants are the Edomites, <clears throat> who have a age-old argument with the Israelites, Jacob's people. Um, in fact, when Moses is coming back uh, from, the pro from, from Egypt to come into the Promised Land, <clears throat> they want to pass through the land of Edom, and, and the Edomites say, no, you cannot come through here, you're Israelites, we will not allow it. Eventually they negotiate and go through there. But That's the primary part, and, and Rebecca, his mother, hearing what's happening, uh, guides him away from there, sends him back to his, her brother Laban in, in Haran, where she's from, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm sure that the next reading we're going to have is, um, yeah, is, is Jacob finding his wives and making the deals there with Laban. Uh, so Jacob leaves, and he comes to this place called Bethel, right, which is uh, Hebrew for house of the Lord. Uh, Beth is house and El is God. El is, the, the E-L of Bethel is short for Elohim uh, or Elohim, which is, which is God. Not Yahweh, right? Elohim is generically God. Um, Elo, actually Elo is generically God. Elohim usually refers to God most high, but it can refer to just a God. Yahweh, uh, the Tetragrammaton, is always uh, God the Father. Uh, well, the triune God. Uh, I am, right? Uh, Yahweh means I am. So he leaves, and he comes to this place. It's night. He's got to stop. And I always have this image of, of Jacob fleeing alone. There's nobody with him. Um, maybe nothing with him, but maybe a, a bag of bread and a skin of wine and some cheese maybe to sustain him as he's traveling. Maybe... Maybe a little bit of money that Rebecca saw to it that he'd have in case he needed to buy something along the way. But the goal is to get to to Haran and to his uncle uh, Laban. Uh, yeah, you can pronounce it Laban or you can pronounce it Laban. I've heard it both ways, and it's it's uh, neither here nor there. But he, he reaches the spot and he places his head on a stone to sleep. And I guess that makes sense. You don't want to, you know, something to support your head. Um, but then he has this this dream. And we always talk about Jacob's ladder, an image of a ladder um, set upon the earth and the top of it reaching heaven and the angels of God are ascending and descending on it. Um, I'm going to, this is kind of edgy stuff. That's nah, not entirely edgy. Others have said this, but it's the cross. It's a, it's a foretelling of the cross. The cross is the ladder upon which angels ascend and descend. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the gospel. Um, it's the promise of, of the Christ crucified for you. Uh, and 
And so there he sees the promise of the gospel with angels and ascending and descending from heaven. Because the, the cross, not the shoulder, the shoulder, the cross, look at it, it's a ladder with one rung. And it, and it rises from, from earth uh, to heaven, right? Um, so that's, that's really what Jacob's ladder is. Symbolizing, foretelling, foreshadowing. But then he hears the voice of, of, uh, of God. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to your offspring. The promised land. Um, here, as Jacob has separated from his father and his family, God tells him that he is going to be uh, the one. His line um, is the line of the promise. Um, which again is contrary to all the traditions of human traditions of, of the Hebrew peoples. Um, you know, Esau was supposed to get everything firstborn birthright. Um, he should have received his father's blessing, but with the help of uh, Jacob's mother, um, he lost that. And, but God shows that this is the right way. And God had, had said to Rebekah, and sent a messenger to Rebecca before um, either of the boys were born when she was pregnant and told her uh, that the, the uh, younger would rule over the older. Um, and so it, so it shall be, so it shall be. And so his offspring, he received the same promise that Abraham had been given. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad north, south, east, west, and fill this land. Your offspring shall be the, I'm sorry, and in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You don't see it there, I mean, it doesn't say it, but that's the promise of Jesus. All families on the earth are blessed through the Christ, and that Christ comes through the line of Jacob comes through through the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, um, and those that follow after him. And God gives him a promise that he will not be alone. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. God has given him a promise that he will come here again, that when the time is right, this is where Jacob will be. Um, remember that. Remember that when we get to Jacob's death and when we, um, when we uh, read about the Exodus. But God has promised never to leave. And when he says, I will keep you, and that's not like just, that's treasuring and guarding and protecting, right? Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you, guard you, protect you. Um, and I will not leave you until I, I have done what I have promised. The Lord doesn't lie, uh, and he will do it. And we see this through the history. This is written down for our instruction. We see the fact that God doesn't lie, because Jacob will be buried here uh, in the land where, where he saw the, the, the angels ascending and descending. Uh, and then Jacob awakes from his sleep, and he's afraid, and he sets up the stone that he was on as a pillar, as a marker, uh, pouring oil on it, making an offering. Um, and then he makes a deal with God. Now, you and I don't have to make deals with God. God's made a deal with us. The deal was Jesus and the gospel. But here in the Old Testament, this is not an unusual thing for a man to make a covenant with God. If you will do this, Lord, then I will be your servant, and you will be my God. Ooh, the power flickered. I don't like that. Um, yeah, and so he makes this deal. Uh, if God, if, um, and I'm thinking that's Elohim. If Elohim will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, I, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be Bethel, God's house. 
And of all that you give me, I will give a tenth, right? Tithe. He will make an offering of a 10% of everything that he has been given. And God will do this. God has already said he will do this. And so Jacob's bargain with God, if you will, is kind of empty. God has already made him a promise. The only thing that Jacob is saying is if, if you do that, Lord, then, then I will be your servant and you will be my God. Um, and I will make offerings to you, a, a portion of what I have received from you. Um, and God does it. God's made a deal with you. Um, he has said that he is your God. Not that he will be your God if you do something, but he has said he is your God. In fact, he sent his only begotten son to purchase you, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood. He bought you from sin, death, and the devil. You, you were born in your iniquity belonging to the devil. But God has sent his son to buy you back from the devil through the cross make you his prized treasure to keep you. And he has given you by that blood the forgiveness of sins. When you are baptized in him and believe in him by the faith that he gives you, then you are his. And your sins are forgiven. And you live eternally in Christ Jesus. You don't have to make a bargain with God. God has already made a bargain with all mankind, and he's fulfilled it in Christ Jesus, his son. All you have to do is believe. And even that faith that's required for belief has been given to you in the waters of baptism and in the words of Scripture. Amen, my mouth is dry. That's what I get for taking narcotics. Our prayer today, let us pray. Oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue this day with the Lord's, or with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And by the faith that we've been given in Christ Jesus, we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Wednesday morning, as we we're in the midweek of Lent 3. O oh Lord, I lift up my heart to you this morning, sincerely grateful for the opportunities of another day. Bless me so all that I do today may be acceptable to you. Grant me such success in my work as you know to be best for me. Keep me always mindful that all depends on my possessing your abundant grace and blessing. Help me, I pray, to reflect the infinite love with which you love me in Jesus Christ, my Savior. 
in all my dealings with others help me to love them as I love myself and to do for them what I would have them do for me. Make me strong to resist any temptation to take what does not rightly belong to me. Give me the courage to suffer losses rather than to inflict them on others. Help me to realize that life consists not in the abundance of many things that I possess, but rather in what I do with what I possess, whether much or little. Teach me to know that godliness with contentment is great gain and to live accordingly. In Jesus' name I pray, and in his name I begin the tasks of this day. Amen. Our God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, especially those who are stuck in the conflict of Russia and Ukraine. Be with our nation's leaders, granting them your holy wisdom. Uh, guide them by the Spirit towards peace and harmony with all in the world. Sustain the borders of our nations and all nations and grant peace among all peoples. For those who are sick or suffering in body, mind, or soul, we pray, especially for Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Rose, Lois, and all those whom we name in our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you be with those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially with the family of Ashley's cousin this day, as, as they have passed uh, from this world into uh, your care. And be with them, uh, the, the family, uh, that, that uh, you, by your Spirit, would give them peace. Be with all who call upon your most holy name, granting comfort, assurance, and strength where it is needed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Dry mouth. Almighty God, merciful Father who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends in Wisconsin, keep warm and be safe uh, as the snow flies. Uh, my friends in Michigan, keep dry and keep warm. And to all of you, God's blessings. And we'll see you all uh, tomorrow morning is Bible study up at Rhinelander. So I probably will, e I'll either start early or I'll be recording tomorrow morning. So in the meantime, God's peace be with you. And however it is, you'll see me tomorrow and I'll see you uh, when the time is right. God's peace.